Do you know who you're spending time with? One of the most ruthless men on the face of this planet. I need you to help the U.S. government. I can see myself doing more of this stuff. I think I might have a real gift for it. Good, because we got another mission for you. No, 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 no. I think if most of us had found out that a writer had written a work based on their perception of us, we'd be petrified. Yeah. Did you have the same reaction when you found out Tom Gomickon had this project? Absolutely. I was terrified. Um, as you so well put, petrified. I said, no, 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 no. I said, get another actor. That might be interesting. Uh, because I was worried that this would be some sort of mockery, that it would be like a Andy Samberg Saturday Night Live sketch. And instead, Tom Gormican wrote a nice letter. It was an intelligent letter. It was, it was thoughtful. And it, it spoke to a genuine interest in some of the early work. And so I thought, okay, this is terrifying, but it might be the very thing I could learn from. I see myself as a student of film performance. And I think that the very thing you're afraid of within reason, as long as you're not hurting yourself or somebody else, is the very thing you should probably do because you might grow in some way from the experience. And I'm happy to say I did. But it was a balancing act. It was a balancing act between what is truly so-called Nicolas Cage and what is the director's interpretation of so-called Nicolas Cage. And his interpretation was a much more neurotic, anxiety-filled version of this person because that's where the humor in his mind was coming from. <clears throat> the biggest difference between the two of, versions of myself is the idea that I don't want to spend time with my family and I put career before family. That is not, that, nothing could be further from the truth. How comfortable are, are you with this mythic image of Nicolas Cage? And what are some of the, the stranger things you've heard? I don't really reflect on it too much. I don't think about it too much. I mean, my job is to facilitate film performance for the director and for myself. And I approach this very much in the same way. I quickly got away from the idea of Nick Cage um, and just got into what I normally do, whatever my self-prescribed -pre program is to bringing characters to life. As far as it goes in terms of what you're talking about, the sort of, a, I guess I, I think you're speaking about a kind of a pop culture mummification of m my persona or my work, I don't, I don't think about myself in those terms. Uh, I'm as mystified by it as, Perhaps you are. I, 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 <laughs> I don't know why it's happened to me, but you know, it's, it's not really in my job profile to worry about it. Would you actually in real life take up an offer like that if a billionaire were to offer it to you? No, I mean, if somebody wants me to go to their birthday, birthday party, I would go to their birthday party, depending upon whether or not I liked the person, but uh, you, you couldn't put a price tag on it because then once you put a price tag on it, then it's just not cool. Uh, I've been a huge fan of Nicolas Cage my whole life. I sort of developed a fantasy to be in movies very, very young. And I would say he had a huge influence on that because of um, so many of his screen performances. Uh, that is to say, I was very, very nervous and very intimidated to um, meet him, act with him. Um, and he really uh, uh, eliminated those fears by being um, an incredible scene partner, uh, a total professional, thoughtful, curious, kind. He treated me like a prince, to be honest. And um, uh, we traveled from Los Angeles to Europe uh, on the same flight. And, um, and he sat in front of me and I, you know, I, 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 I waved hello and his, his, his blue eyes were, were peering <laughs> over the, 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 the ma mask and um, uh, with, with, with warmth and uh, very welcoming. And, and from, from that moment forward, um, I just felt like I was in good hands. That's right. Right. Now, of course, um, there's a set piece in the film, The Great Shrine, the Nicolas Cage Shrine. How real were the props? <laughs> I mean, did you have access to real props? And did you make off with one or two items? I wish I had, to be honest <laughs> with you. 
Um, there are, uh, are so many things. I remember I was trying to think of which prop I would steal that belonged to a Nicolas Cage movie. And I had uh, decided on the, uh, the pantyhose that he puts over his head in Raising Arizona. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's classic, the Cohen film. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I take that over the uh, gold uh, pistols. I'll take that over the golden guns, yes. <laughs> now, um, for, for that, that sense of comedic timing you developed with him, were there comedy duos that you looked to for inspiration? Uh, there weren't any comedy duos that I, that I, that I looked to. I, 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 I know that I, I think we all felt inspired by um, uh, a, a duo like uh, Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin in Midnight Run, for example. Um, but I will say that I, it, it, it's all credit to one, my scene partner, Nicolas Cage, and also the script that uh, Tom Gormican and Kevin Etten wrote, uh, because th the relationship was totally fleshed out on the page. Um, and, uh, and, and with Tom's direction, um, it helped guide us, uh, you know, to anchor the story in this uh, friendship, ultimately. Um, and uh, so I'll, I would say all credit is to them. You kind of spend your time between TV and films. But the thing about Cage is that he's exclusively a film guy. Yep. Even if the film is direct to video. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, do you know why he's so pure like that and why you are willing to commit yourself, I suppose, to the time commitment of series work? You know, it's true. I think that he is a, a, a purist in his craft. And I, I, I would imagine, um, and of course, I can't really speak for him, but that level of commitment needs to be concentrated within the medium of feature film um, uh, and and because that level of of, of c commitment um, is intense which is why his performances no matter what the genre no matter what the budget um, is uh, at, always at the top of his game and uh, for me uh, it, it's just how I um, uh, entered the, the, the industry, it, it came, I, cause I actually started in theater and so much of my experience is actually on, um, regional and, uh, New York, uh, stages and, and, and television came after. And then of course, through, uh, Game of Thrones came opportunities for feature films. So, um, I guess for me, the way I understand it best, as far as my job is concerned is within all mediums.